Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. Now, in this episode, I am going to address a question of optimization. And I'm going to take a quick break from the episodes that I've been doing on embedded programming to discuss this because it's a question that I've gotten a couple of times. And this is the kind of topic that I like to reserve for when I'm doing uh, on-site training. So just keep that in mind that if you like this kind of thing and you like the work that I do here on C++ Weekly, consider bringing me in for on-site training at your company. But I've had a question a few times now that I thought I should address, and it goes something like this. In my example, where you have the summation of a range of integers, very straightforward example that we have here. We have GCC having generated all this code that uses SSE and does all kinds of fancy things and probably gets even fancier if I specify that I want it to use native architecture. Yes, so it's using even more SSE kinds of things, not just the SSE registers that I honestly don't understand. And we have some mouse over help that we're getting from the Compiler Explorer now that explain what these instructions are, but I've zoomed to the interface, so that's not gonna work very well at the moment. So we're doing all these really cool advanced CPU things in GCC, and Clang is generating this extremely humble output. And the question is basically, if Clang is not using SSC, how is its code better than GCC's? And the answer is actually pretty simple. And to show you the answer, I'm going to actually walk through what each line of this assembly is doing. So our first line is test EDI EDI. Now the first thing that we need to remember is that we're actually working with a 32-bit integer here. And our Intel registers are split up something like this. We've got our 32-bit register called RDI, excuse me, our 64-bit register called RDI, and the lower half of it is EDI, the 32-bit, the extended register, and R is referring to the entire 64-bit register. So in this case, we're doing a bit test of EDI against EDI. We're essentially saying, is EDI zero? If it is, then we're going to jump down to this label, LBB zero underscore one, and this label is the exit from the function. So we're basically saying, if it's zero, don't do any work at all, exit. Then our next line, move ECX EDI. We're saying we're going to make a copy of EDI. And EDI is the count. That's what came in from our count parameter in our sum function. So now ECX is equal to EDI. That's easy to handle. LEA says perform some addition, subtraction, multiplication, as if you were going to do a indirect memory lookup. But don't actually do the ind indirect memory lookup, just do the work. So now we're saying ECX is equal to our original count that came in, and EAX is equal to our original count minus one. So ECX equals count, EAX equals count minus one. Then we're doing this imol of rax rcx. Now I certainly do not understand enough about the hardware architecture to know why Clang is switching back and forth between the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of these instructions, but I'm assuming that it comes down to efficiency for what the what the CPU is able to do best. So that now we have our formula taking shape, and I'm going to shorten count to C. We have C times C minus 1, and that has been stored back in RAX. That is the result of the operation. Then we're doing a shift 
right of RAX, and a shift right is essentially the same thing as saying divide by 2. So now we have C times C minus 1 divided by 2, and then we add back in EDI, so add EAX, and notice we're back to the 32-bit version of the register instead of the 64-bit one, EDI. So we are adding in our original count value because we never modified EDI. That would be a rather unfortunate thing to do, I think, since this was a const int that was passed in, but the compiler might have been able to do things with shifting register stuff around that I don't understand. And this is our final value. So now our result is C times C minus 1 divided by 2 plus C. And we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra, but not very much. So we end up with C equals, excuse me, with C times C plus 1 divided by 2. This is our final result here. And this is something that may look familiar to you. And that is because it is this classic summation of a range of integers that has been known for several centuries. And so we're just following the summation. And our assembly, if, and we review here, we can see that we have absolutely no loops. We have one jump, which at this point I think is even of questionable usefulness, like are we really saving a lot by doing this test and jump compared to all of this insanity of hundreds of instructions that are almost certainly going to well, not hundreds, dozens, anyhow, it's going to have an impact on our instruction cache and on our CPU pipeline, and it's going to activate all other parts of the CPU. It's actually using more electricity, and the Clang version is just a simple once through, couple of multiplies, couple of adds, one shift right, be done with it. So the Clang version is better in every conceivable way. It is smaller, faster, simpler, easier to understand, uses less power. So there you have it. The uh, complicated solution is definitely not always the best solution. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.